guys, it's Alyssa, and I just want to go over the Academy Award nominations for 2018. Uh, first, I'm just going to give you my general overview of how I felt, and then I'll go through the categories. Not all of them, there are so many, uh, but I'll go through them so that I can kind of give my reaction and, you know, who I think would win or, you know, just the, the overall reaction, basically. So, uh, first, I'll just get it out of the way. I, I was not surprised that Blade Runner 2049 did not get nominated for anything besides cinematography and then some technical awards because the movie just lost so much momentum in the movie theater that it kind of had to perform like Mad Max Fury Road in order to get those nominations and it just didn't and people are going to disregard it as just a sci-fi film and I know in years to come it's going to be an absolute classic and it may not get what it deserves right now but neither did the original Blade Runner so I'm I'm actually okay with that. I'm still upset but I was expecting it but there were a few things I was not expecting and I'll go into that. So first supporting actor. I was not expecting for Army Hammer to not be nominated. He was fantastic in the movie. You can't have Elio without Oliver. They they both should have been nominated and I really thought that Michael Stolberg should have been nominated as you know playing his father as well. That monologue at the end of the movie that that sequence from that monologue to the very end of the movie that's one of the best sequences I've ever seen in film history and I definitely thought he could have gotten the nominations but I thought for sure at least Army Hammer would have gotten that nomination but he didn't. And then for directing as well, you know, I knew Luca Guadagnino wasn't supposed to get a nomination but I just kept hoping that it would happen and I am going to say something where I know I'm just going to get a negative response for saying it. I just know it. But if if the whole point of this is for me to be honest about how I feel, I'm just going to say it. I don't think Greta Gerwig deserved a nomination for Best Director. It was a very good movie. She deserves it for screenplay. Saoirse Ronan deserves it for actress. Laurie Metcalf deserves supporting actress. But in terms of directing, look, if we're going to look at movies that are in maybe a similar genre and you have coming of age stories, when you compare Lady Bird to Call Me By Your Name, there is such a more deft and mature hand in Luca Guadagnino's film. And that maturity, she will become a great director. I'm sure she will, but this is her first film. So you can see, and I said this in my review, She's a better writer at this point than she is a director. And Luca Guadagnino has been filming for years and years and years. Uh, and, and he created the feeling of love and the feeling of growing up. And it was pure poetry. And I think it's a sin that he wasn't nominated. And, uh, and I'll just leave it at that. So, all right, let me go through the category. So for best picture we have Call Me By Your Name, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, Get Out, Lady Bird, uh, Phantom Thread, The Post, The Shape of Water, and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Now uh, no real surprises here except for maybe Phantom Thread, maybe. Um, I've, I've been hearing excellent reviews about the film. I'm really going to go uh, try to go see it this weekend. I, I, I desperately want to see it. I love Paul Thomas Anderson. I don't think there's a film that he's made that I've ever disliked. Uh, so I'm glad to see that up there. In terms of who's going to win, I really think it's going to be three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. That's not necessarily who I want to win, although I love that movie so much. Um, maybe The Shape of Water. I think it could win, but uh, it, it's not a lock for any of them, but I would say those two movies, I think, have the edge right now. So then for lead actor, Timothy Chalamet for Call Me By Your Name, Daniel Day-Lewis for Phantom Thread, Daniel Kaluuya for Get Out, Gary Oldman for Darkest Hour, and Denzel Washington for Roman J. Israel Esquire. I think, I hate to say it, but I'm certain that Gary Oldman has it in the bag. I mean, he hasn't he hasn't lost yet, so there really is is no chance, I think, of anyone else um, winning that award. I will be seeing Darkest Hour soon, so hopefully I'll be able to give you my opinion. Um, 
soon on his performance, definitely before the Academy Awards though. Uh, and then for lead actress, it's Sally Hawkins for The Shape of Water, Frances McDormand for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Margot Robbie for I, Tanya, Saoirse Ronan for Lady Bird, and Meryl Streep for The Post. I, I mean, Frances McDormand is going to win this thing, right? I mean, she hasn't lost anything yet, I think. She's a guarantee, but uh, I was really happy to see that Margot Robbie was nominated for I, Tanya because I really thought she deserved that nomination. Uh, but this is definitely Frances McDormand's year. So uh, for supporting actor, my most hated category right now, uh, Willem Dafoe, The Florida Project, we all knew he would be nominated, Woody Harrelson for Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri, Richard Jenkins for The Shape of Water, Christopher Plummer for All the Money in the World, and then Sam Rockwell for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Now, obviously the one person I would take out to put in Army, Army Hammer would be Christopher Plummer, who I love, uh, but it does seem like a safe bet. It does seem like the Academy is trying to make up for some of its past sins where, um, you know, certain people weren't nominated who should have been nominated, and here they're kind of rewarding a film for taking out an actor uh, who should be taken out and putting in someone else but I mean it, it might be hard for Christopher Plummer it's almost like you were second best you were chose second and it's like look I was better all along and I'm sure he's amazing in the film but um I I don't know I I really believe that Army Hammer deserves that last spot so Sam Rockwell will, will win anyway so I don't know why I'm getting upset but I just I really thought he deserved that nomination. So for supporting actress, we have Mary J. Blige for, Blige for Mudbound, Allison Janney for I, Tanya, she's obviously going to win, Leslie Manville for Phantom Thread, Lori Metcalf for Lady Bird, and then Octavia Spencer for The Shape of Water. Now, Leslie Manville was a huge surprise for Phantom Thread. No one was talking about her getting nominated, so I was definitely surprised by that one. Another reason for me to go see this movie, uh, but once again, Allison Janney, she has got it in the bag for, and then we have Best Director, so Chris Nolan for Dunkirk, so happy he got nominated, he definitely deserves it. Jordan Peele for Get Out, Greta Gerwig for Lady Bird, Paul Thomas Anderson for Phantom Thread, and then Guillermo del Toro for The Shape of Water. You already know how I feel about this. So if I were to guess, I'm, I'm actually not sure because Martin McDonough got snubbed as well. And you know, in my review for Three Billboards, I praised that movie on every level, but I did think maybe um, it, it didn't deserve a Best Director nomination. Uh, every, the, the writing is whip smart, the acting, the cinematography, everything is, you know, at the very top for that film, but I don't know why, I just felt like maybe it didn't deserve a Best Director. So here, if we want my personal favorite, I'm pretty sure I would pick Chris Nolan for Dunkirk. He is amazing. Or Guillermo del Toro for The Shape of Water. And if I were to put money on it, I would say Guillermo del Toro is going to win for Best Director. So uh, he did create a beautiful film, but I also think the way that Christopher Nolan kind of envisioned everything, uh, you know, it was amazing, but Guillermo del Toro did the exact same thing, you know, so uh, both films, as you guys know, I love, I just love so much. Uh, next, we'll move on to the screenplays. So first adapted screenplay, and this is the one where I think maybe Call Me By Your Name is going to actually win. So you have Call Me By Your Name, The Disaster Argus, Artist, Logan, total surprise, Molly's Game, and Mudbound. Now, uh, Disaster Artist has no shot of winning considering what's going on right now uh, with James Franco, so they can't win. Logan, I think, is very lucky to be nominated. When do you ever see a movie that other people, it's not, I would not say Logan is a comic book movie at all, but I think to the outside world, they would see Logan as a comic book movie. We know that it's a Western and it's a brilliant film and it was just beautifully shot, beautifully acted, but to the rest of the world, I think they'd be surprised by that. Uh, Aaron Sorkin's Molly's Game, I haven't seen it yet, but Aaron Sorkin is just an incredible writer. Uh, I'm a little surprised with Mudbound getting that screenplay nomination because in my last review, I didn't particularly like the screenplay. I thought there was way too much voiceover. It 
felt like a book and I, I didn't particularly like the way that it was structured. Uh, it's a good movie, not a great movie, so I was a little surprised to see that. I think Call Me By Your Name will win, but like, you know, knock wood, I don't want to say it and now it's going to lose. So uh, for original screenplay, that is where I think there is a huge race. I'm really, I'm not necessarily sure of what will win. So it's The Big Sick, Get Out, Lady Bird, uh, The Shape of Water, and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. You know, I think Martin McDonough should win it for his screenplay. It is so smart and fast and it's a very original story but you just don't know with some of these other movies they may want to give you know if they're going to give Three Billboards Best Picture they may want to give Lady Bird Best Screenplay so you know the Academy Awards always work in this kind of back and forth way where you have to think okay well it'll probably win for this so will they want to give it the award for this I think Martin McDonough will win but I do not think that is a lock at all. Uh, then we have for cinematography, yay, Roger Deakins for Blade Runner 2049. At least he got that, right guys? Uh, then you have Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, which definitely deserves it, Mudbound, and The Shape of Water. And the interesting thing here, which you would say was more of a surprise, is Rachel Morrison was nominated for Mudbound and she's the first female cinematographer to get an Academy Award nomination. Now, in my review, I just said that one of the best things about the film is the cinematography, that every shot just looked like this gorgeous picture, this really sad picture, but it was every shot was just so artistic and the color palette was beautiful. Definitely deserves the nomination, so that's a little piece of history, so that's nice nice to see. Uh, I'll go through the documentaries because I haven't seen that. For Best Foreign Language Film, I'm not going to go through that because I haven't seen any of them, but I do know that In the Fade is definitely considered a snub. Now that's not been released here for me to see it, uh, but it looked like a movie that I would really want to see and everyone's been talking about it, so I was kind of shocked to see that was not nominated. Then for film editing, I really thought that Blade Runner 2049 was going to get film editing. It didn't. Uh, Baby Driver, Dunkirk, I, Tanya, The Shape of Water, and Three Billboards. I really hope and think that Dunkirk should win for the editing. It is just so well put together. There is not a moment for you to take a breath in that movie. And, and I'm not sure how much Dunkirk will win, so they may give it the editing just to recognize um, what an excellent film it is. So that's that's where I would go for the editing. Uh, then for the sound editing, sound mixing, I'm not going to go through that because I don't necessarily know or understand the technical awards as much. Uh, but I will end with the songs because that was something that I was really surprised by in a very, very happy way. So uh, the original songs are Mighty River from Mudbound, Mystery of Love from Call Me By Your Name, Remember Me from Coco, Stand Up for Something from Marshall, and then This Is Me from The Greatest Showman. I really didn't think but really wanted the Sufjan Stevens song to get nominated, Mystery of Love. I, sorry Coco, I think is the best song written for a movie all year. I can't stop listening to it. It can make me cry in a heartbeat. I just, I love that song so much. And then for best score, we have Dunkirk, Phantom Thread, The Shape of Water, uh, Star Wars, which I thought was a little surprising for score. I mean, I didn't see it yet, but it does not usually get nominated for score. And then Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. I really hope Dunkirk wins. I know that Shape of Water won for the Golden Globes, but the mu the score is the point of the movie, so I just would be surprised once again to see Hans Zimmer lose that. So that's it from me for now. Uh, the Academy Awards are definitely a fun but difficult time for me. I get really into it, uh, sometimes to my detriment. So I would love to hear what you guys think. Uh, who were you really surprised by? Did you feel like there were some snubs? Uh, should certain films definitely have been nominated that were not nominated? Uh, were, are there films that you think shouldn't have been nominated? Uh, please let me know and then we can all kind of go through this together. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do uh, and leave a like if you could. Uh, and I hope that you all have a cinema chic night. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.